Hi, I'm Lou. If you're watching this video, you probably like to invent things. If you come up with something good, you'll want to protect it. One way is with a traditional patent, which lasts 20 years, but costs five to $10,000, which is pretty expensive for an individual. There's another good alternative in the provisional patent. It only lasts for one year, but only costs $150, and you can do it yourself. One year is long enough for you to test market your product or find a buyer. In this video, I will show you how to do your own provisional patent. The product we're going to patent is a foosball training system. Every competitive foosball player must be able to execute the pull shot. This is done by pulling the ball across the table past the defenders and then shooting it into the goal. The training system is installed on a foosball table by placing the barrier bar between the toes of the defensive men and then connecting the offense and defense rod together with the hooks and springs. If you shoot the pull shot too slow, the barrier bar will block your shot. This forces you to make a shot fast enough to beat the level of the spring so you can get the ball in the hole. There are three different springs and using them in different combinations you can go anywhere from a beginner shot all the way to very very advanced shot. Now we make our patent application. There's no special form. You can do this in about any word processor. This one's eight pages long and I want to start by looking at the last page. You can make these as drawings or you can just take photographs of the invention itself. And you'll notice I have three separate drawings. The overall picture, that's how the invention is installed and used. And then a breakdown of all the parts in the invention. And then finally, if there's any part that's somewhat obscured, you have to break down and show inside what that part looks like. Once you have your drawings all done, then you want to label them. Start at the number 10 and then go by 2. So there's my 10, 12. Basically you want to label every single part in the entire invention in multiple views. So the springs here are number 30, but this spring is 46, 48, 50. So each thing is very individually marked and you'll see why in just a minute. So now let's go back to page one and you just label your name of your invention. This is sort of a one sentence description of your product. This is a statement. I have invented this training system to in improve your pull shot. This is prior art section. What I did was I went on to Google Patents and looked up to see if there's anything similar. In this case, I said no. No one else has made anything like this, so I said there's no prior art. If there is prior art, you have to list it here, explaining what other people have patented before you and how yours is different. Well, actually, advantages is how yours is different. So my advantages were over nothing, basically. I said prior to this system, a lone pro player could only practice shots by shooting on an open goal. Basically there was no defense. And this, the advantage of this one is that it provides defense and a way to get better. Okay, then your drawings and figures section. Uh, and that continues. There's figure one, two, and three. In summary, shows what tells what each one is. And then the reference numbers, drawings reference numbers. Uh, as you can see, I label each piece number 10, which, let's go back to the back page. Number 10 is a foosball table. Number 10, foosball table. 12 is offensive three-man rod. Offensive three-man rod. Labeling all the parts. There's more parts. Then finally, when we're done with that, we go to the description section. And this can get a little bit tricky. Here, you just have to walk through the entire invention, basically walking through one drawing at a time, explaining every piece and what it does. So, for instance, I say figure one is a perspective view of one end of a foosball table. 
10 and you just put the number 10 which came again from our drawing here 10 is the per this is a foosball table is what I'm saying showing an offensive three-man rod 12 12 a defensive two-man rod 14 14 and so forth basically you go through and describe the whole invention and then every time you talk about a part you just put the number right after it so the reviewer can look as he's reading through this can look at your drawing and understand what you're talking about now, after the description section there's this alternative embodiment section here's some other ideas of the way to do it uh, springs may be replaced with alternative spring combinations or single springs a set of four springs instead of three springs may be replaced with alternative elastic material in other words maybe you might want to use a rubber band or some other stretchy material hooks may be replaced with some other kind of fasteners maybe you use velcro fasteners or some other thing basically what you're doing here is saying I invented this product this way but I know there are other ways that can be done and this prevents someone else from patenting it a different way than you did and being able to sell basically your invention right out from under you. I know I went through this quickly but don't worry at the end of this video I'll put a link to where this document is on my website. Next you'll have to fill out a patent application cover sheet. It's form SB16 from the US Patent and Trademark Office. Pretty straightforward, just put in your name, address, a couple other things, uh, title of your invention, uh, and also oh, make sure you check down here, applicant claims small entity status. And that will entitle you to a $125 fee because you're an individual. Companies that apply for our patents have to pay more. Then next is form SB17 from the same place, Patent and Trademark Office. This one is very simple. Basically, you just put your $125 fee. This whole sheet just says, I am paying $125. Next, you'll want to make a return postcard. This is something you put in your, with your application. On the front, just put your address and a stamp. By the way, this is just a 4x6 card. You can cut this out of cardstock. On the back, put provisional ap patent application of your name for your invention consisting of so many pages of specification, so many pages of drawing sheets, and the filing fee of 125 received today and then when the patent office gets this when they receive your application they pull out this postcard put on their sticker and then drop it in the mail to you and when you get this back you'll know that they received your application not that they have approved it but at least you'll know that it's in their hands and they're considering it and put all that in one of these flat mailers. You want to use express mail to send your things in. It costs a little more but it turns out since the US mail is a government entity as soon as you drop your application at the post office that counts as the day that you submitted the patent. And then what you want to do is get this this tracking number that comes, this is the the slip that sticks on the front or here copy down this tracking number and put it on form SB16 right there it says express mail number and that is what you just copy that number right into that spot so all this goes into this envelope and gets mailed to the commissioner for patents PO box 1450 Alexandria Virginia 22313-1450 and this as I told you before this is a link to SB16 the cover sheet and this is the link to SB17 the transmittal form for the fee this is also I'll put this on my website then you just wanna sit by the mailbox for six to eight weeks.
after that stuff has been sent in. And finally, hopefully, you'll get this. This is the response from the USPTO. They hopefully will give you an acceptance. They can also give you a rejection and tell you why. You might have to fix something. I luckily got it on the first time. But anyway, it looks like this. And this thing is extremely hard to read. This here tells you whether you were accepted or rejected, although it will be extremely unclear. And then the next pages will tell you how to know if it was granted all this applies and you have to take this and decipher the front page and if it was rejected not granted all this applies and you have to decipher that one last thing once you receive your patent approval you should mark your product with US patent pending uh, mine also says foostrain.com which is where I sell it that might be another thing you might want to do is go to my uh, foostrain.com website and see how I actually market this product. Thank you for watching and good luck with your patent application.